We're here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's take oh, a Oh, what the fuck? Let's see. The fuck? <laughs> what? Why do I have glow stick written on my face? Wait, what? Why do I look did angrier than normal? Heads? Uh, Why did I ask that question? Wait, wait. Just, just look. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yes. Marcia, give me your shirt. Is something well, the no, matter? Use your own. What the fuck? No, give me your coat. <laughs> give me your little cape. Give me your little stupid cape thing. You used your own. What the fuck? Use give your cape wings. thing. No, don't use my wings. What the please. fuck? <laughs> please. Hold still. Please. Fine, fine, please fine. God damn. So hold still. The wings. God fucking damn it, cat. No, don't still. <laughs> maybe, maybe we could like, maybe Braylon has something that we can use. Fuck Braylon, give me a second. Do I have anything to wipe this off? Please. Ma'am. It's a feather. Boom. There we go. Well, now I'm back to looking pretty. Lasted. You can <laughs> stay I that way, Marcia. I'll use my own. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna use a fucking agility cape to wipe my face. We're just gonna fucking use the cape. There we go. God fucking damn it. Give me my gauntlet back. Oh my god. Why? You can only carry so much shit and I'll hand it over. Why? I need it. Okay, I have a gauntlet. I can carry things while using the gauntlet, like like my fishing rod, and then I also have Cam's bow. There, I'm at a perfect amount of Should things. I a spare. Hand me the gauntlet. No. Give me the gauntlet. No. I don't know how to appeal to this <laughs> fucking I have to, you, you shouldn't have wiped the shit off your face. Then I would have been a lot more, like, willing to talk, but I mean... Yeah, I find that highly, highly unlikely. Rex, it's like, you gotta uh -huh. give something shiny in return I'm for so, shiny, I'm, kinda. I'm very trustworthy. I don't have anything I trust her with. You can that's trust how, Yeah, that's why I gave her the bow me. with no arrows. Because I, I, you do I still I have no arrows. Still, I was like, I still have a bow, so it's like... Bold of you to assume I have no arrows. Come on. <laughs> anyway, so where are we going today? Uh, oh, it's downstairs, I guess. Yeah. Hecate? Okay. Hecate looks out the doors with a nervous expression on her face. Well, this is a far further than I thought we would go. <laughs> Don't look at me, this was your idea! Echo says from nearby, hiding behind a couple of crates. Do not pin blame primarily on me. We both wanted to go at the time. Uh, uh Hecate, I, I thought we left you guys back in the cave. Well, you did, indeed. And then we decided to not stay there. I should have never let you talk me into this. Echo quickly sasses Hecate. You're unbelievable sometimes. Hecate's eyes turning back to you all. <sighs> After all, you left to return to Etheria, Echo and I started thinking. You guys haven't exactly come back with any information about who Echo used to be, you know? Well, we're doing our best, but we don't really have anything conclusive yet. Oh no, it's alright. After all, we knew this wouldn't be easy. But then we were thinking. If we're trying to find out who Echo was, how will we know if something or someone is familiar to her if she's not seeing them for herself? Maybe you're not getting any information because you don't know where you should be looking. Or who would know better than Echo, right? Or who would know better? <laughs> and, no, I'm sorry. and who would know better than Echo, right? The only problem with that is I can't exactly go out in public. And neither can you, remember? Besides, how would I know if I'd see someone I knew? I don't remember anything! Echo complains. Hmm. Maybe seeing something familiar will jog your memory. Exactly! You never know until it happens, so don't be such a pessimist! Okay, fine. But the issue still remains. Echo says. 
Fallen angels were banished. We're doing enough illegal shit by being up here in the first place. You didn't seem to have a problem doing illegal things as a usurper. Yeah, but it's different, okay? Echo snaps a bit before ducking behind the crate again. I was a usurper. I was following direct orders from Regina, who would tell me where to go and what to do and how to hide. No? I'm surrounded by idiots. Ouch. Uh, there must be something we could do to hide you guys. I mean, uh, maybe there's something in these crates? Hecate begins to open the crates around her carefully. Hecate, stop touching the crates. You don't know where they've been. Echo starts to say. I'm sure it's fine, Echo. From the looks of this place, no one's been in this house for possibly years. She runs her finger along the top of a nearby shelf and observes the dust. See? Uh, rather unsanitary, isn't it? Yeah, well, we haven't exactly seen this house in use. It's kind of just been abandoned the entire time we've been here. I wonder who you used to- Eep! Eke would yelp a bit as suddenly a cylindrical canister she was reaching for would fall from a top shelf. The lip falls off the canister, covering her in some sort of white powder. Oh dear. I made a mess, didn't I? I'm Sky, thank apart. you for the rain! Sorry. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I, I'm such a klutz. You okay? I'll be fine. <laughs> Only thing that hurts is my pride. <laughs> She clears her throat and coughs a bit as she shakes herself off, brushing the powder off. Echo would stare at her with slight judgment before her eyes would brighten with a slight idea. Wait a minute. Look. She would say, walking behind Hecate and looking at her wings. Look at that. She says, observing Hecate's wings. Y'all notice that the white powder she has spilled on herself would have gotten caught in her wings, making them look a bit more of a light gray than a pitch black color. Oh wait, guys, wait. You guys could use that power powder to like cover up the wing colors and everything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god, it's you're right! What is this stuff? Headgate picks up the canister carefully and looks at the label. Hmm. Oh! It's luster dust, it looks like. Made from Ethereum white flower wait, what flowers? Good, it looks non-toxic as well. That's perfect. This should be safe, although we'll have to wash it off after a day or so. Oh, why is that? What's luster dust? It's a good- it's a good used in decorative baking that you can brush or sprinkle on cakes or cookies for colorful variety. It's sort of like an edible sugar powder. Great, so hiding in plain sight means we've stooped to covering our wings in sugar. It's all we have! Now come here and show me your wings, I can apply it on them for you, you know? I'm good. I don't need you touching my wings. Echo, don't be stubborn. It would be far easier if you just let me apply it for you. You ain't touching my wings, okay? They're sensitive! Look, just finish that up so we can get moving, yeah? See, right. I told you. And I have, like, moved my mouse and just spun in a perfect 180 in the time it took for that follower <laughs> roll to show up. Wispy. Oh, amazing. Hello, Wispy. Echo. Echo. That's the canonical pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> Echo got drip. Echo, Echo got peeks drip. out from behind the crates timidly. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. She bites her lip carefully, narrowing her eyes. Are you doing good, Echo? Fine! Perfectly fine. Splendid. Spectacular. Uh, other words that mean fine! Ugh. You don't really seem fine, Echo. Are you nervous? Hecate asked from nearby. I'm not nervous? Why the hell would I be nervous, huh? It's not like the last time I came up here, I was one of the biggest threats against their useless king, and I actively went out of my way to harm people just to get the king and murder him. Not at all. Okay, why did you guys come up here anyways? It was Hecate's idea. It was both of our ideas. Hecate huffs. Okay, maybe it was both of our ideas. But it was mostly her idiotic optimism that got us into this mess, you hear? She thought that maybe, since you're all failing at your jobs to finding out who I am, I would have better luck gathering information on myself if I actually took the time to walk around this place on the surface. Exactly! 
If you see something familiar, we could then try and investigate it further to find out if it does, in fact, have anything to do with your past. So what's the problem? You're just nervous about walking around now? Me? Nervous? <laughs> no way. Not at all. She taps her foot, obviously nervous. I'm a cold-blooded killer who slaughtered monsters in the dark forest they lived in for decades. Why would you be nervous about going into Etheria, huh? Because you want to be better and you don't want to get in trouble. You're a better person than you think you are, Echo. Hecate smiles brightly at her. What? No! Oh my god! I just don't want to get in prison for the rest of my life, okay? That's all! I'm already wanted in this place. And finding my real identity really is worth it if I get locked up... Is finding my real identity really worth it if I get locked up before I get anywhere? Hey, that's fair. You need some kind of disguise, though. Obviously. She sighs a bit, leaning back on a nearby crate. Look, the good thing is that it's still fairly easy for me to cover my face. See? She motions to her coat as she would pull a hood out from under her coat and adjust it over her head. See? Plus, how many people in this damn city can say that they actually got a good look at my face when I was a usurper? Probably only the Valkyrie would know what I look like. So as long as I stay away from them and hide the wings somehow, I'm set. Then there's her. Echo points a finger at a confused Hecate. Hmm? Oh, uh, what are you talking about, Echo? She came from this place recently. Look. If you were to ask around the city about Hecate, how many people do you think would confidently be able to say they remember her? Huh? Oh, I see. Hecate says looking down. Ah! Hecate says looking down. <laughs> <laughs> I was relatively friendly towards many people in this city. If they saw my face, I'm certain they'd recognize me and report me since they would know that I am a fallen angel. Precisely. And I don't see something for her to wear to cover up. Because, no offense, but a different hairstyle isn't going to cut it. Yeah, you're right, that is a bit of a problem. Echo pauses for a minute before looking around in a couple of crates. Oh, so when I say that looking in crates is a good idea, you're... Wait, that's the oh, wrong that's, thing. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm so sorry, before looking around in a couple of crates. Oh, so when I say that looking in crates is a good idea, you're against going through other people's things. But now that you do it, it's all right. Hecate crosses her arms, pouting. Shush! There must be something around this damn house we can use to hide you. Oh, well, hello there. Echo stands up straight again, pulling a hooded cloak out of a box. This'll do, huh? She tosses the cloak to get a Hecate. Try that on, all right? A uh, hood is better than nothing. Hecate carefully pulls the cloak on, adjusting the hood over the top of her head. She looks back at Echo and smiles. At least it's something to hide behind now. <laughs> Hecate does a small twirl to observe the cloak. It's rather finely made as well. Y yeah. Just use that to hide or something. We'll try and lay low and let them do all the talking. Hey, look at this! Hecate would say, pulling the back of her cloak forward. This cloak even has the same symbol that's on the back of your jacket. Oh, yeah? Probably a brand logo or something. Huh. Alright then, so you guys have some cloaks to hide yourselves then. Yeah, yeah. But just because we can hide now doesn't mean I'm happy about the situation, understand? <laughs> Still much rather stay in the cave and not risk being prosecuted in a court for invading the city, but whatever, right? Doesn't matter. This would be great! We could walk around a theory together and try and finally get those answers you want. I'm sure we'll find something. Hecate says. <sighs> We're so doomed. I will right, look. Come on then, both of you. Let's get out. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you don't come, come back, back no, no more. more no, no more, no. It is day. Excellent. Come on. I don't think any of these normal people will have updated, so let's just get moving. Yep. Yeah. Where did we leave Lily? Town Hall? Uh, let's go find Town her. Hall. Is Town Hall let's locked? Let's go collect the 201. I didn't load any- Wait, I have a key to it anyway. Wait, you didn't see my beautiful artwork. Thank Man. God. Good. Cap, how have about speed this? Route. Next time- Let's see who gets there Lyle faster. Is it gonna be Cam or me? It's a tie. Wow. 
My shortcut was hardly a shortcut. <laughs> Ow. Oh god, I'm loaded in the city. Lily? No. No. Did we lose the 201? Oh no. No, there she is. She's straight out of Squid Game! No way! Guys, 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 what? guys. Yeah, what? yeah, what? yeah. I cannot believe this. First of all, Cam, ripped jeans and Etheria, really? Second off, um, <laughs> reload your skin. <laughs> what? <laughs> but second Obek, off, second off, did you do that? That's why. <laughs> Obek, prove something God. to me. Do you know how pog my internet is right now? Yeah. yeah. Less than a two second delay. Less than two seconds. Obek typed some shit up. Instantly, I responded to it. He thought I was in his fucking router. Yeah. I'm really <laughs> ascending. Yeah, and also Obek yeah, told really. me that, uh, that I can't yeah, even you relate to, to that. Yeah, yeah my, he did. My delay at Lyle, on Lyle, campus Lyle. is still pretty gross. Lily, how fast will you react to this? Not very fast, but I knew yeah, you were uh, cat stole uh, Rex <laughs> Scotland. I didn't steal I it. He gave it to me. No, you stole it. He gave it to me. Oh, yeah, you didn't talk he to graciously Lila. let me borrow it. She stole it. Rex mm -hmm. doesn't share. He's like she one of stole the... some fishing rod and then used that to steal other things. What are you talking yeah. about? I didn't do anything with the like. Ah. Why would you hate me in that way, Rex? Are we ready to move, idiot? We don't exactly have all the yeah, daytime we need to in talk the world. We need to talk to Lila have... before nightfall. Lila looks at the collection of items before her as she sets out the empty grenade canisters, the fallen star, the enchanted apples, and the sun spirit essence before her. Hmm. She seems a bit lost in thought as her gaze focuses on the fallen star that glitters and glows before her. I see you gathered everything. Yeah, is everything okay, Lila? No! Yes! <laughs> it's quite fine, actually. I'm sorry if I worried you. I simply got a bit lost in my own thoughts, I suppose. <clears throat> Since you helped me gather all these ingredients, now I just need a couple more items here and there to make this. Although I should warn you that I'm not entirely certain if this flashbang will work. It's just a bit of an experiment to see if an item is possible. It's the only choice we have, really. Server. Please. Server. <laughs> <laughs> of course! <laughs> I just suppose that I want to apologize in advance if it doesn't end up working. I want it to work just as much as you heroes do, but if it doesn't, then there isn't much else I can do. Your help right now is enough, Lila. Thank you. I don't know what you're helping with, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, kindly heroes. Her eyes would fall on the back, would fall back on the star that rests on the counter. She stares at it for a moment before she would eventually exhale calmly. She looks back up at you all and tilts her head slightly. Heroes, would you like to help me in crafting this? I promise you won't have to do much more arduous work for me. I understand that I put you through quite enough. I simply wonder if perhaps you would keep me company while I make it. I can understand if you don't want to, though. I'm sure you all are busy individuals. Um, I'm just I'm not really... This is like the only thing that's keeping us from progressing, so we can... I mean, if it's time. helping her yeah, Mexico faster. With, yeah. It's also Why becoming not? nighttime, so... Sure. Y you'll join me? Oh! <laughs> Thank you so much! That's that's very kind of you, truly. Uh, the first thing I'll need when I make this is a natural binding agent for the intense energies. I'm going to go to the chapel to gather some pure waters from the fountain. Would you be able to meet me there? It shouldn't take long at all. Perhaps you could even talk with Aelin while I'm... Why did my brain just die? With Aelin while I'm there! Uh, I'm sure you heroes probably have some questions for her about Aetheria currently, especially considering that the king has shut himself away for the time being to attempt to solve the situation himself. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, we'll meet you there. Yeah. But, time to navigate yeah, not backwards. yet. Is it nighttime? Is it? Going up the stairs. <laughs> Go it's every night, backwards. Lily. This is what we found out yesterday. The problem, it really is every night. And uh, not just in Aetheria. Hmm? Where else? 
uh, and while. also in a theory, I'm not sure why Cam phrased it like you're that. Right, you're right. If you just leave yeah. the city, it's still outside. And oh, plants. okay. Yeah. I was like, all is, it in there. is it in Is it in the entire no. yeah. Here, I got an idea, guys. I got an idea. No. Pass the straw. And oh, so what we're trying to stuff. help Lila with. Stuff. Cat. Put it no. back. No. No. No, 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 no. This is only going to get worse. Put it back, Cat. Like, Lila, you don't Cat, that doesn't mean take morning. more. Put it back. Uh oh. Put it back. This is a pre Look, Lily, you put it on the wrong shelf, you idiot! Oh my god, y'all. Oh, this is getting progressively worse. <laughs> oh my god, I'm losing my mind. Look, so we <laughs> tried to get a ride in order to deal with this stupid legend that Aelin gave us or whatever, right? Mm hmm. And so we went, we talked to the pirates. And we had to strike a deal with them. We did something slightly illegal, and now apparently the only way we're actually going to get over there is if we can prove to them that we can actually deal with these creatures, which no one else has apparently been able to deal with yet. And Lila oh. has an idea, so we're going to try to go with that. Okay, I understand. Of course, the stuff that she had us get in order to make it kind of work was the biggest pain in my ass I've ever seen. Yeah, and it seems like she's not sure if it's gonna work. Well, I think this is one of the few times we had a time-sensitive mission. Yeah, and this is also pretty high stakes, evidently. Apparently, mm -hmm. it's not just this kingdom, but it's like an entire aether-wide problem. Whatever that. Can means. I have my? Can I have my chest plate pack? Oh, Please? that's your chest plate. Oh, that's mine. That's your cat. Mine. What the fuck? Cat, I just need it right now. Please. Hey, do you hear that? It, my gauntlet. Cat. Shh, shh. It's probably a celestial. Just keep your heads down. <gasps> yep, there's uh, one. Wait, that doesn't look like a celestial. There's a Wait, what? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? I saw someone in. It was look. They had a what? hood. Well, it wasn't an echo or hecate. They're downstairs. I think it was a red hood. What? Hmm. That's kind of weird. It. Just look, I don't want to take my chances. It could have been a celestial. Just keep your heads down. Can we just go to bed? Can we just yeah, come please. Up here? Say Penny. No. Here. Also, okay. Lily, armor's not going to do you too much good up here. I and mean, it'll save you from dying, but really, if we get in a conflict, here. you don't want to stay in it anyway. I give you this for gauntlet. Let's go to sleep, idiots. What is that? All right. Okay, cat. Excellent. This is what it does. Cat, this is what it does. Okay. Come on, idiots. Um, I'll take this one. Why is there you a potato can... in the pedestal? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I just noticed Who did that. that? I hate holding this. I hate holding this. I Rex, know, where are you? Rex, where are you? Down I got your stars. gauntlet. I got, oh, got your it. gauntlet. Then hand it over. Yeah, I don't want this thing. Here you go. Oh my god. Just take turns being gauntletless. Yeah. I, <laughs> I made Cat more blue. I saw. <laughs> what the fuck did you do to Cat? I gave Cat an Aether thing. It's a shield, but it makes it look more blue. I don't see the more blue. I just I don't see... see it on cat. I saw it on you, Cam, but I don't see it on cat. I, think I see it on cat. It. What? The, oh, whatever. <laughs> Come on. It works. You got your Let's gauntlet back. Out. You're Kid. Oh, Adam. Hi. Howdy. That's where you went. The young man stands directly in your way outside of Lila's magic shop. His eyes are dark and serious as he stares at you all carefully. Hey, it's Adam, right? Where is Lila? I require expertise on a matter. He doesn't sound at all like a child when he speaks, using elevated diction in a professional and calm tone despite his prepubescent pitch. His eyes look straight t through you, almost as if they're burning holes into your very souls. Well, most of your souls. Um, she's a bit busy right now working on something. Should probably come back later and talk to her. What were you speaking with her about? He takes a step forward, his wings fluttering slightly. Although his wings remain tuck tucked neatly behind his back, you can't help but feel slightly threatened with how they quiver. Hecate would whisper from behind you. That fluttering he's doing with his wings, it's like an intimidation move for angels. Usually angels with larger wings are seen as more intimidating and powerful, and the flutter your wings behind you is a threat to spread your wings completely to oppose someone. Huh. Well, what we were talking about is none of your business, twerp. 
It is my business when I notice individuals who don't belong up here behaving suspiciously. He steps forward one more time, his wings slowly untucking themselves from behind him. I understand that this city knows you as heroes, but in my eyes, you're all threats to the hierarchy perfectly crafted by our society over centuries. You're clinging to clouds as you test your shoddy flight, and you cause problems with every wing you flap. Look, kid! Do not patronize me. I may be a child, but I can assure you that I'm far stronger than you all. <laughs> he holds his gaze before taking a step back, his wings tucking behind him once more. Managing the inner machinations of this city is my top priority. If I wish to grow and become the greatest sorcerer of the king's court. Sorceress? Sorceress? <laughs> Then apprehending suspicious activity before it escalates is naturally ideal for me. Wait, wait. Sorcerer in the king's court? Wait. There's no sorcerer in his court. Not yet, there are not. I shall be the first. And that starts by shutting down your strange activity and behavior before you cause more harm than you already have. You and the other demon of Etheria. Grey. I'll have my eyes on you, heroes. Mark my words. Without another word, Adam would respectfully place his hands behind his back, giving you the smallest bow before walking away, his back straight and his head held high. What the fuck is his deal? What is Did he just he's call a... me the demon of Etheria? I... Uh, 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 yeah. What? Yeah, he says that... Yeah. I mean, I guess yeah, you are a dread. Yeah, he says that the gray too, because he is part dread. Come on, we need to go to the chapel. Okay, are you enjoying your new moving. toy? We should actually get moving to places that we need to mm -hmm. get to while we have daytime. Yeah, because the second the true. sun sets, oh yeah. Walk and talk, fellas. It's noon. I'm coming across the bridge. I'm running across She'll the bridge. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. When she comes. Ooh, ooh. She'll be running around the mountain when she comes. Ooh, should we talk ooh. to Lila first? Okay. Hey, Lila. Hey, Lila. Lila stands at the fountain, carefully stirring the pure waters with her hand. She would lightly be humming to herself as she works, her materials set aside in the grass next to her. Um, I think people are supposed to keep off the fountain? Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> it's quite all right, I promise. Aelin and I are rather close, you see. She allows me to use some of the goddess pure waters and my magical artifacts in experiments often. As long as I do not mess with the fountain or damage it in any way. I'm being quite careful to make sure I do not cause a disaster. <laughs> she takes a small vial out of her pocket for a moment, dipping the vial into the water to fill it halfway. I'm glad you decided to keep me company. I really appreciate it, heroes. Yeah, it's no problem, Lila. Really. My real problem is with the server. Please? Please? <laughs> Please. No! Did you crash? I, I clicked one over. Hopefully this is where it starts. Your kindness and courage never ceases yeah, to amaze is. me. Okay, good. Because it's at the very top of my fucking screen. <laughs> <laughs> Your kindness and courage never ceases to amaze me. I don't think I could ever be as brave as you all. <laughs> She laughs a bit as she takes the vial out of the water, holding it up to the sun to observe it as it glitters. Don't you ever find it difficult? Being brave, I mean. I mean, sometimes, but I guess at the end of the day, you have to do what you think is right. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I do know what's right, but... I don't know if I'd be able to stand up for what's right. You know? I'm not nearly that strong. She brings the vial down a bit, swirling the water around hesitantly before frowning. She would take out some sort of si She would take- Sift. Take out, so oh, okay. She would take out some sort of small sift, pouring the water through the sift into another vial from the pouch at her hip. Well. Physically strong, I suppose. Well, you're honestly pretty strong. <laughs> you flatter me, but I know exactly how strong I am. I'm not being pessimistic, just realistic. 
a long time ago, by your standards of mortality, <laughs> I, uh, I got into a rather terrible accident, you see. An accident that I could have prevented if I were stronger. This great calamity was threatening the town I came from, and when I was attempting to save someone from the rubble, I failed. And in the process, I almost got myself killed. I woke up some time after in the care of Malik, the angel who runs the medical center in Aetheria. You may have met him, but I woke up injured and my eye was gone. Yeah, so how exactly am I looking at two of them right now, though? That's the miraculous part, actually. I was brought to Aelin to recount my tale, and I asked if there was any way to heal my vision. She brought me over to this very fountain and instructed me to rest my face in the fountain's pure waters. She began to pray to the goddess's statue just overhead that my vision be cured and my mind be alleviated. I remember it rather clearly, actually. It was a starry night all that time ago, and as fate would have it, it was then that a fallen star descended to the ground, falling into this very fountain, the energy and water entering my wounded eye and then blessing me with this. She motions to her glittering golden eye. Oh, wow. Ever since then, I kept that star on me. The star that saved my life. <laughs> She pulls a chain out from under her tunic to reveal a dim fallen star around her neck. She looks at it fondly before picking up the glowing star you brought to her. Oh dear, I, I spent so much time telling you that the tale I- I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, you're fine, Lila. Seriously. Uh, I should almost be done here, alright? Once I get enough of the neutral agent shifted, sifted, I'll probably need to speak with Azriel at the school. I remember he gave his students a project a couple years ago about raising moas from eggs with an incubator, and I'm hoping he'll still have the incubator with him. I'll require some sort of heated and stable environment to ferment all of the energy together into the grenade casing. Perhaps if you have not already, you could speak with Aelin? Until then, you can meet me at the school. All right, sounds like a plan. Yeah, let's go talk to Aelin now. Yep. Go 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 Oh my god, it's night, it's night, it's night, it's night. The priestess would still be praying at the altar to the goddess, her milky white eyes closed in prayer. Oh, blessed goddess, hear my prayers. Set unto me thine will, and grant me audience with your light and majesty. Answer my prayers, blessed goddess. I beg of thee. Um, Aelin? Her chanting ceases, and she would quickly look back towards you all. Ah, heroes. Welcome back. Is there anything I can assist you with? Have you had any luck on your mission? Well, I mean, we haven't had much of a chance to really start it. We're still trying to get a ride. I would have thought that there would have been an abundance of angels clamoring at the chance to assist you. I'm sorry to hear that you're not having nearly as simple a time as I anticipated. She stands up, brushing her dress off. However, the matter of transport is beyond my control. Well, at least we found someone willing, but honestly, I'm hoping we get to leave soon. That's quite perfect, then. It seems you've made decent progress. Is there anything else I could help you with? I'm afraid I'm not certain I can see your reason for speaking with me. Is there any other ways in which I may be able to assist you? Um... It's just... About the trials. The, the legend you told us, I... Queen, nothing against you, but I'm not sure how brown sugar and grilled cheese mixes. What the, what the fuck? <laughs> That's such a curse! Oh, I did it too! I mean... I could kind of see, I mean, I'm not oh. my combo preferred, oh. but oh. I could see how it might work. Of course. Are you still a bit confused? I can understand that the words of legend are not always the easiest to heed. 
Yeah, how the hell are we supposed to find these dumbass trials in the first place? I'm not sure I follow. Did I not outline clearly on the map the supposed locations of the trials of CL? I mean, yeah, you kinda did, but like... Our ride says he's never exactly seen any more trials. Ah... I see. You're concerned on how you are supposed to locate such trials if they are hidden in plain sight. She brings a hand to her chin in contemplation. I can see the predicament you found yourselves in. Does the legend say if there's a, you know, any way to activate these trials? I'm afraid I would not know. According to legend, similar to CL's ultimate trial for the truest of souls and minds, all the trials of CL will seemingly appear when the goddess deems the challenger worthy to traverse her personal realm. So there's nothing else to the legends? I'm afraid not, heroes. You have my sincerest apologies in that regard. But there is nothing more I may do for you but pray. As I said when you last spoke with me. Um... Uh, it's fine. We'll just figure it out. Like we always do. Could not help but overhear that you were assisting Lila with something. Might I ask what you were all up to? Oh, um, we're trying to create something to kind of help dissipate the celestial spirits around here. Your eyes would widen slightly in concern. Oh, dear. I'm not certain that's a good idea, heroes. You cannot simply dissipate these spirits. Who knows how the goddess would react to such an action? Would you not wish to anger her before you've had a chance to locate her trials and speak with her yourselves? Why do you think this would anger her? It is merely a theory of mine. The goddess and the appearance of these strange celestial creatures are obviously tethered to one another. And I believe that is because these creatures are perhaps a punishment for us all. What? what why would you be punished? That is what I'm not aware of. That's why I would like to speak with the goddess personally, to learn of the origins or reason for the appearance of these creatures. But she refuses to communicate with me, and from what I've heard from my correspondence with King Seraph, he has had even less success in speaking with her. If these creatures are a punishment from the goddess, I simply want to know what terrible transgressions he committed to anger her, so that we may remedy the situation. Right, that honestly makes sense. That is why this mission of yours is imperative. Do whatever you can to find the goddess and speak with her heroes. You are our last hope. Yeah, yeah, right, whatever. Okay, we have- it's about to become day, it looks like I can see the moon. Mm. Excellent way to pass the time! Woo! <laughs> Come on, we need to head over to the school. <laughs> Ice cream. Oh, that's okay, cursed. School. Cursed. Hey there, uh, Lila, what's it like <laughs> in New York City? City. <laughs> Excuse me. Hi. You find Lila and Azriel already speaking within his classroom. Lila would laugh a bit before asking. <laughs> but I really just came in here. But I really just came in here or ask if you still Two. had those. There was a typo. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I'm like, I'm reading this wrong. How am I doing this? Okay. But I really just came in to ask if you still had those incubators somewhere. Yeah, I just have amazing common sense, Lily, and I could tell when there's a I'm typo. Sorry, I always assume that I'm reading shit wrong, not that there's oh. a typo. Right, of course. <laughs> I think I have them somewhere in the attic. If you'd like to check up there. Thank you so much, Azriel. I really appreciate it. Lila smiles. It's no problem at all, Lila. Uh, hey, you two. I will be Russian, but not during a dialogue. <laughs> ah, heroes, welcome in. Lila was just asking me. They know a Azriel. Oh my god. They know Azriel. They're just accompanying me while I'm gathering the right materials. Oh, I see. My mistake then. How about you all wait down here while I go grab the incubator? All right? Lila smiles at you all. 
I would be fine with keeping you all company. <laughs> I was just thinking I could use a break from grading papers. Yeah, that sounds fine with us. I'll be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> Lila calls back as she flies up toward the attic carefully. Asriel would look back at you all, smiling. What can I do for you, heroes? Mm, could we possibly ask about some court cases, maybe? Oh, court cases? Such an interesting subject to have questions about. How can I help you all? Yeah, well, rumor has that there's apparently a big one a century ago. You know anything about that? A big one a century ago. Jill thinks to himself carefully before laughing a bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. You may have to be more specific. There tend to be plenty of large court cases in Etheria, even sometimes for small reasons. The king has been known to overreact at times, but it's all well. After all, his punishments are always just depending on the severity of the crime, even if he does not even if he does decide to take even trivial cases to court sometimes. Wait, so you don't know anything about a like huge case that happened around like a hundred ish years ago? Azrael, who's failing your class, definitely gray. <laughs> Absolutely, oh. most certainly gray. No. That's simply the problem, I'm afraid. Without more details, a big case a hundred years ago could have pertained to something as large as angel slaughter, or it could have been as small as petty thievery. There's not much of a gauge on what big case refers to, you see. Perhaps if I had any details on the assailant, I would have more luck? But until then, I can't say I have much information for you, I'm afraid. Well, I mean, the criminal would have been a female with white hair, blue eyes, maybe with a coat. Hmm. Perhaps there may be someone similar to that? Uh, hang on just a moment. Azriel stands up and walks back to a large filing cabinet behind him. He would look through one of the drawers of the cabinet, shuffling his fingers through the papers carefully. I had my students write about court cases last semester for a small project on the system of government of Aetheria. It was a bit of a research paper, you see. And I do believe one of my students may have described something similar. Where is it? Aha! Here it is! Nezil takes out a small booklet, flipping through some pages. Really? Skims through the book carefully. Yes, here it is. An angel with white hair found guilty of theft from the Aetherian bank. Sentenced to falling. Why, that's quite severe for truly a petty crime. Oh, hang on, this is rather interesting. According to the student's research, this angel, after the ritual concluded, appeared to escape confinement. Reports in the palace archives stated that the fallen was never located after she lost her purity to the ritual. And guards wrote in the official logs that she must have broken free from her cell and fallen to Rem on her own. How fascinating. Echo's ear would twitch a bit, and she raises an eyebrow, a bit confused. Huh. Can we see that paper by chance? He hesitates for a moment before sighing. Uh, I suppose so. After all, this was last semester. But if a student asks for their paper returned, I will ask that you return it to me, alright? It would be then that Lila would descend from the attic, an incubator in her arms. I'm back! <laughs> Heroes, could you meet me in the back of my shop when you're done here? I have everything I need now. You can keep talking to Azriel if you have to, if you have to, though. Oh no, we're we're just finishing up. But thanks, Lila. <laughs> All right then. If you need me, I'll be in my shop. If that concludes our discussion, then Heroes, I should also get back to grading papers. It was lovely speaking with you all. However, actually, uh, Azriel, um, when can I get that next flight lesson? I'd heard the rumor around Aetheria is that you're going on quite the divine quest to save the realm once more. I would not want to interrupt such important hero work with boring flight lessons. Perhaps one of your acquaintances while you are off on your adventure may teach you in my stead. Would that work? I guess that works. Uh, thanks again, Azriel, though. Until next time, heroes. Student's paper. Thank you. Court case of 1900. Wow, yeah, now that's totally recent. The oh. Case of the Fallen Bank Robber. What a title. <laughs> <laughs> really original. <laughs> this is probably a child. Did this child sign their name? They No, it just says Azriel. Oh, it's a teacher's note. Oh, this is a sign. 
What? You got this. A long time ago in the 1900s of Etheria, there was a court case regarding a criminal who was caught for stealing from the Etherian bank. According to the records I found in the castle, the criminal's name was never recorded. The testimonies against this criminal were given by Charmaine. I asked her about the charges, and she said that this angel stole a number of Ethereum from the vault. According to the documents, the angel was charged with falling, and the ritual commenced soon after. However, reports state that the angel was not found in her cell the next day, and that after that, it was assumed that the angel escaped. But no one knows for sure. Reports state that the angel is now down in REM, living up their days without memories. Falling is... The rest of the paper is research on falling. I mean, you already know this. There's a teacher's note at the bottom. That was a very nice paper sign. I'm very pleased with the turnout. Thank you for sharing with the class today. This is some good research as well. Ezreal. Yeah, that kid actually, like, went around and asked people to cite their sources. I'm definitely not, you know, I'm too lazy for that. <laughs> Bruh. So why do I have, still have this? I shouldn't. Anyway. It might be Echo. Maybe. Could be. Maybe, if it's... Don't know. And if Azriel says that that fits like the exact look, then again, they said there was a kind of a common look for it still. And it fits the bill. It fits the description. I don't see the sun. I don't see the sun. Oh, oh I see it. It's setting. setting. Let's, get to, uh, let's get to Lila's. Yeah, Lila.